I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another exciting episode of The Great War on the Road. Now, we are in Belgium shooting several special episodes. We're in Dixmude. Now, longtime viewers of our show, or people that are particularly interested in the First World War, will recognize Dixmude, the Isar River, the Race to the Sea. And we'll be talking about them in another special episode. Today, what we're going to be talking about is Belgian Army uniforms of the First World War. And by we, I actually mean he, because as you can see, I have a guest star today. Now, can you tell everybody out there who you are, where we are, and what you do. Hello everybody, my name is uh, Peter Verplanke. I'm a conservator, curator of uh, this museum here. We are in the Xmeude, in the Ezertoren. It's a huge memorial, it's a monument uh, built after the First World War. But in the tower itself, it's a, a museum about uh, what happened here in uh, World War I. Now, this is a, it's a private museum, it's not a public museum. Right? Yes, indeed. So, what we're going to see, these are things that were loaned, mostly loaned by yes. other people. Uh, most of what you see of the, from the uniforms are uh, not uh, from, uh, uh, of us, but okay. are given to us to show to the people. Okay, now, what we're standing in front of now, these are the early ones of yes. the war. Um, as you can see, it's a, it's a mixture of different uniforms. There's no, uh, not one line in it, different colors as well. These are the uniforms that used um, in the Battle of the Azer, October 1914, uh, the battle that happened here, here? in the Expo. Okay, and why, can you explain a bit about the variety? And, uh... Well, it's, a, it's a, like I said, a mixture. You have a, a civic guard, you have uh, grenadiers, but um, one, uh, carabiniers uh, over there. But uh, one uh, uniform that I, I want to show you is uh, the one here in the middle, because uh, we know that it was used during the battle, October 1914, because um, the person who uh, has worn it uh, was injured during uh, uh -huh. the battle. He was... Um, a rifleman by foot, right? Yeah. And he was injured and then uh, transported to an infirmary and then even back to London where he recovered. Um, now, what about that kind of crazy hat with the feather in it? That's pretty cool. Uh, civic guard. Uh -huh, okay, so it so. means civils that were called upon arms and they were helping, defending. Um, but you have to know that when the army came here, yeah. they were already three months in war. Right. And starting uh, near the border with Germany, right. they were all the time in retreat. So they were uh, August, September, October, till they came here, they were uh, tired. Right. They, their uniform was a mixture. What, what they took, they, they used what they found. So, so they weren't really ready for a major war before the war? Or? Um, well, they, we, we had a, a good army, yeah. well-equipped army, uh, well-equipped fortresses, yeah. if the war would have been like 20, 30 years before. Okay. And of course the German army was like 10 times the size too. Yeah. It was bigger. Yeah. But you still, you still, this 5% of the, of the country, this area beyond the Easter and stuff, you still, they never took all of Belgium, you took that, held that for the entire war. Indeed. Right? This, this monument is built here for the reason because it's never taken. It's never right? taken. And now we're going to go upstairs and we're going to look at the evolution of the Belgian uniforms during the war. Now, because of the narrowness and the lighting, we're not going to be on camera there, but you will see the uniforms and that's probably what you care about anyway. Now, over here, this is about getting all the supplies. I mean, I can see made in France, made in Argentina, made in US, made in England. That's pretty impressive, right? They needed the, the uniforms fast yeah, and, of course, as cheap as possible. Right. So they have to look uh, all over the world for, for uh, uniforms and material. So they were, it was really, a, the Belgian uniforms were really a conglomeration of all over the world. Yes, of s some of the pictures you, you would, you, you look and you think, oh, this is a French s soldier. Oh, yeah, like that guy. <laughs> but no, it is not. Okay. Right? It's a Belgian uh, wearing a mixture of, of French looking uh, French looking uh, clothing. Clothes. Okay, so these are the headgear, the hats and helmets and things. Yeah, we have an so. overview of the evolution starting uh, at the beginning of the war. You see there's a color in it. And then the khaki is coming up. Sure. Um, the, the, 
the, the caps are replaced by a helmet. Yeah, okay, right? the Adrian. Uh, the, the Adrian, the f a first, is, is, is a French, yeah. based on the French model. And then, then cut, cut and camouflage, okay. slip over. But the, again, that was uh, not good for the injuries. Yeah, and then uh, replaced. Um, and here at last, you see um, a police cap again. Uh, and, and you see again that they put some color in it. All right. Okay. And now, how about here? So these are, well, it says spring 1915, the new khaki uniform. Yeah. The, um, you, you see the, the trenches. It's a trench like it was in uh, spring 1915, yeah. right? Um, and you see the, the, the Belgian soldier in his blue uniform, and he's, he has a, a visitor, and he's already in a khaki. He's looking at, at, at the khaki uniform as, why, where does it come from? Uh, where do you have something new? Uh, where, come this new uh, where is this new uniform coming from? Yeah. Right? Uh, it's the first time they're using khaki. We saw that, we've seen that with other armies and, and our other uniform specials yeah. have changing. Okay, are these guys who I think they are? Yes, indeed. These are, are the, armor, the Belgian armored car. Yes. But as you can see, he's still wearing the Acer cap right. as well. Um, so they're still here uh, around uh, in, in, in non-occupied Belgium. Uh, but, but you can't use the armored cars uh, here. So. so they are ready to go. So they went to Russia and they served in Galicia. But because Belgium and Russia were not officially allies, they had to be volunteers for the Russian mm -hmm. army. That's how yes. they had to serve. Right? And they went by boat. Yeah. Um, and the problem was when they came back. Oh yeah. In 1918. Yeah, because Russia left the war, you can't go north. Right. Can't go west. So they can't went go south. all around the world, through yeah. Japan, uh, through the United States, and then back to France. These are the special forces um, used uh, not in the beginning of the war, but uh, from 1916, uh, small groups, uh, tactical, uh, tactical forces, okay. and their equipment. Like they put some uh, uh, grenades yeah. on their rifles and oh, shot rifle it, grenades, right? yeah, rifle yeah. grenades. Uh, these special forces were used here in the area between uh, the Belgian army and, uh, and the German army. The, the, oh, after the flooding? After the flooding, okay. in, the flood, in the flooding, uh, for, the, for capturing uh, prisoners or uh, uh, in the flooded area, they, they tried to go to the farmhouses and the ones uh, that the Germans yes. had yes. from the Belgium. That's a, that, I can see that picture there. That's how we're there. What, what we what we have here is um, we we could talk about every single subject in detail. Sure. But here we uh, we, we talk about the shoes and and again. In, in, in very 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 detail. Um, you have to know. We, we, our army had not enough shoes for everybody, so they had to look and, and ask for other countries. Uh, like before the other uh, stuff yes, we saw. Yes, uh, can you make shoes for us? Mm -hmm. And how much will it cost? Cost. So made in Belgium, made in England. Made so in they, they they made a demand uh, to to France, to Great Britain, to 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 Amer to the United States. Will you make shoes and how much will it cost? Um, okay, wow, this looks very interesting. What's this? So okay. this is a, a special kind of helmet uh, called the, uh, after an ophthalmologist. An ophthalmologist, okay, yes. yeah. Uh, he, uh, with the name Wekers, right? Okay. He, he, he was here at the front seeing that there were a lot of injuries. Um, oh, to the eyes. Uh, to the eyes. Yeah. So he was looking for a solution, right? So he made this special cask. Um, this special helmet, yeah. so you can wear something before your eyes. Right. Oh, this is near the end, yeah. This is near the end. This is uh, like a place where officers come together, mm -hmm. talk about the, um, their life as an officer, the okay. special things they have to do, the communication possibilities, the... The, the maps. The maps, uh, preparing... Uh, Okay. So oh, yeah, there's the phone exchange, or yeah. there's the phone exchange. That's very cool. Again, every single detail is original. That's great. That's... Okay, uh, and so tell us about these. What are these things? This is uh, the Belgian uniform at the end of the war. Yeah. You already see uh, it's completely khaki uniform. And um, you, you see the mills equipment. Yeah. It was used. Oh, yeah, the mills uh, 
it was used at uh, liberation offensives. Okay. So um, this is the Belgian uniform going from a mixture of everything. Whatever you they, can get. Uh, yes. Still in the blue. Right, still in the blue. Right, towards a uniform that's recognizable. You see yeah. everybody. And with the more modern weaponry. And with the more. Uh, Which included memory. a few experiments, like the like the like armor the shoes. And the like the, yes, well, that was fascinating. Okay, well, well, Peter, thank you very much for taking the time to show us this. Uh, and you guys out there, if you'd like to see our episode about French uniforms from the First World War, you can click right here for that. And do not forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, and all your dreams will come true. See you next time. <laughs>